So let's say that you've made up your mind and you're determined you're going to go back to school, but you already have, let's say, like a bachelor's in education or a bachelor's in IT or, or something similar-ish enough where you're now facing the crossroads of, do I get a certificate or do I actually go and get the full degree? I, I've heard right. that a lot of times too, because for the the cert, you dive in deep to the heart of the core of like the four to six courses that you're like, these are what I'm really interested in. But obviously the degree has much more to offer, but it's going to, of course, take more time. So what kind of value could you get from like one over the other? Or does this go into more of like a question about sector? You, you mentioned about freelance higher ed, but like for corporate, is a certificate enough if you already have a degree and this is just the icing on the cake or is it, you know, something else entirely? So that's a great question. So I, I think certificates, a couple of things. One, certificates work really well if you're in a position of already designing instruction, but you don't quite have any kind of formal background and you want to solidify that. Or if you're like a professional trainer and you want to go into designing instruction or you're in marketing and you really like designing instruction better. Certificate works really well because you already have a job. You're that if you are fresh out of school and you, and you're, or you're in a field and you're trying to, uh, that's totally not related, and you're trying to compete with other people who have degrees, uh, then it becomes a, the, the certificate doesn't, you know, if two people are being evaluated, their certificate versus the master's, the master's will win out. Because if you don't have that experience, if you don't have um, examples to show, if you don't have a portfolio, you can run into problems. So it's really important, I think, to examine where you are in your career trajectory. Um, and then figure out where you want. If you got years of experience and you have some knowledge and you're not totally shifting careers, I think a certificate works really well. If you're totally shifting from logistics, let's say, to uh, designing instruction, uh, or from uh, you know you you've taught K, you know you've taught kindergarten, and now you want to teach adults. Um, while many of the similarities, uh, the degree is going to help you with any stigma of a hiring person going. Yeah, I, I don't know. You, you know, you, you don't, uh, you've taught kids, but you don't have that instructional technology background, you know, so the certificate can be helpful, um, in that element, but the masters will be better to win the job. Now, neither the certificate nor the masters ultimately get you the position. It's kind of what you're able to do, what, what your, um, portfolio looks like, uh, lots of other intangibles, so um, relying on one solely to get you a job is not a good plan. You know, you've got to think beyond that and you've got to think about, well, what, 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 what can I show? What can I do? What can I leverage that I already know and bring to the, to the table? That's awesome. And I'm so glad that you said portfolios too, because that has definitely been one of like the hot topics when it comes to looking at a degree is just overall, whenever someone is just like, Oh, I think I want to go back to school. And we're looking at the overall curriculum of what the program has to offer. And we're starting to go through courses like together, like we, we read the course descriptions together. And I'm looking at it. And I was just like, you know, I think this is it's a good start. But I was like, but I feel like it's kind of missing something. And a portfolio is one of those things that somehow doesn't come across in the curriculum is that you can end up finishing but still not have a portfolio at the end of the day, which is kind of um, interesting for our our industry. I, so I, it's, yeah, it's I, uh, I, no interesting. It's um, uh, it's not fraudulent, but it's borderline, right? So right. If you, right. If you if you are so I saw a debate the other day on Facebook or someone said, you know some programs just teach the theory and they teach it and others only teach, you know, the tools and, you know, and I'm like, uh, why can't we teach both? Like our program at Bloomsburg, we teach the theory and the tools. So when you graduate, you've used beyond you've used storyline, you've used captivate, you've done a podcast and audacity. You've, you know, you've done that stuff, but you're also learning the theory of the design of the instruction. And so programs should really do both, and are, it's really important that um, – and this is kind of a, a question that we talked about before, but it's really important that you look for a program that has both. Unless the, – the, if you want to go on to become a professor, then go on a pure academic-focused, here's the theory, here's a deep dive into the theory, here's you know every person that you – know, 
Genye and, you know, Merrill and all those kind of stuff. Um, but um, if you want to get a job in corporate uh, and you talk to a client about Genye, they're going to look at you like you've got three heads, right? Who's this gagany person, right? So that's not going to help. That's not going to help you get ahead. Like corporate people know about it, but their clients, their stakeholders, their business leaders don't care. All they care is that you've gained the attention, that you've recalled prior knowledge, and that that person can do the job when they're done. And that's really what the focus is in corporate. You know, academic is a little different. If you become an academic instructional designer, you <laughs> I can say this because I'm a faculty member and you work with faculty. Are you faculty or you work with faculty? I oh. am. An, so I'm an adjunct instructor for one university, and then I am a program manager for MIT. Ah, so you're so, both sides. Both sides. I am both sides of the coin. <laughs> so you know, sometimes working with faculty is an experience all in and of itself. Um, yeah. Some yeah. faculties are like my son when he was younger. Somehow they were blessed by knowing everything. Even, even things that they've never heard about, right, like instructional design. So um, – the idea there is that you've got to work with them a little bit differently than you would work with a corporate environment, which is differently than you would work with kids and parents. You don't, you know, when you go as a teacher going into instructional design, uh, one less stress is dealing with parents because parents, you know, somehow know, even though they're not trained, what's the best for their kids and everything. But um, you have a different set of pressures and a different set of expectations and you've got to move a lot faster than you move in the classroom. You don't have as much autonomy as you do that you have in the classroom. You are sometimes asked to do things like, well, this won't work. Like we're just making them aware of this um, compliance issue. We're not actually changing behavior. Yeah. That's not what the client asked for. And, you know, sometimes if you don't do it, somebody else will. So, there's a lot of trade-offs that have to be considered uh, when you go from the academic environment or the K through 12 environment to a more of a corporate type of environment. The language is different. The expectations are different. Uh, when I got into academia, we have a corporate advisory council. And one of the people in the council said, you don't talk like an academician. You talk more like a corporate person. I'm like, well, that's because I came out of corporate. So um, even like just small things in your language uh, makes a big difference as you transition from the classroom to a corporate setting. 